Hypothyroidism is a common thyroid disorder that affects millions of people worldwide, yet it often goes undiagnosed or misunderstood. Today, we have the privilege of sitting down with Dr. Marc Cornier, director of MUSC's Division of Endocrinology, Diabetes, and Metabolic Diseases. Dr. Cornier, thank you so much for joining us oh, today. It's my pleasure to be here. So, uh, hypothyroidism is a common disease associated with the thyroid. Can you explain the functions of the thyroid and why it's important? Absolutely. So the thyroid is a gland. It's an endocrine gland that sits in your neck here, and it produces thyroid hormone, which then goes all over your body to uh, have all kinds of different functions. So it can impact the brain and cognitive function. It can impact your muscles, uh, the heart, uh, the bones. It can impact your liver and how you metabolize medications and other uh, substances. Um, it can uh, impact the reproductive system and can be a, a cause of, of issues with uh, fertility or miscarriages. Uh, and it can also lead to a lot of nonspecific symptoms where people just don't feel very good okay. overall. So it's very important and it affects everything. Everything. So hypothyroidism, is is that the most common disease you see with thyroid issues? It is, it is by far. So hypothyroidism is essentially a low or inactive thyroid gland. Uh, it's most commonly caused by an autoimmune disorder. We call it Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Okay. So the immune system gets triggered, we don't know why, to attack the thyroid and basically over time destroy it, mm -hmm. leading to lower thyroid uh, levels in the body and then eventually symptoms of, of hypothyroidism. What are some of those symptoms? Well, they're, they're, they're everything, you know. So common symptoms are fatigue, lethargy, uh, hair falling out, dry skin, constipation. Uh, it can impact your muscles where they're weaker or have discomfort in your muscles. It can lead to the heart not pumping correctly, so shortness of breath. It can increase your cholesterol. Um, as I mentioned before, it can impact the reproductive tract, so yeah. women can initially have heavier menstrual periods, but ultimately have no menstrual periods and issues with fertility. So, if someone was having these symptoms, how would they get diagnosed with something like this? The, the easiest is to screen patients with a blood test. Okay. Uh, and the standard blood uh, assessment that we do is a test called the TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone. This hormone is actually not made by the thyroid. It's made by a gland called the pituitary in the brain, which is like our master gland that controls all our other endocrine glands. Mm -hmm. So the TSH is like a sensor. So as your blood levels of thyroid go down, the pituitary senses that and says, we need to get the thyroid to make more thyroid hormone, yeah. so it makes more TSH. So as you develop hypothyroidism, which is low thyroid, the TSH goes up. Okay. So it gets a little confusing, because that's the test we use primarily to screen for hypothyroidism. So when we see the TSH going up, that's the indication mm -hmm. that the thyroid levels are going down. Now we can also measure the actual thyroid hormone levels, uh, but those are a little less specific and really don't change until things get really more severe. Yeah, and now there's no cure. There is not a cure in that we don't use uh, uh, medications or treatments to block the immune system. You're, you're absolutely correct. Because those treatments have more detrimental effects than actually just replacing thyroid hormone. Oh, so wow. the good news is we have developed ways to replace thyroid hormone. So we are missing a hormone, we give, give it back to, to patients. Okay. Um, and the traditional therapy is, a, is, a, is levothyroxine, which is the, there's two types of thyroid hormone, T4 and T3. We predominantly make T4, and that T4 is then changed and, and altered into T3 in the body, and the T3 is the active hormone. So we give T4 to people. Uh, it's using recombinant technology, so it's biochemically identical to the T4 that your thyroid normally makes. So it's a very safe treatment. There's no reactions to it. Um, and there are generic forms or brand name forms, a little controversy over whether we should be using brand names or not. Yeah, now is it like a one size fits all treatment? Not at all. So if you have no thyroid, we can estimate what you need based on your body size and okay. your weight. Uh, but early on, you may only have 
a small reduction in your thyroid hormone, so we may only need to give you back some of it. Okay. Um, and so really there is a bit of an art to this as yeah. well. And the goal is we give thyroid hormone back to people, and it takes a while, it takes up to six weeks to get to levels that are steady, and then we monitor that blood test. Again, the TSH is yeah. the primary thing we look for, and we want to see that come down into the normal range. And there we feel like the treatment is, is where it needs to be. Okay, and so you mentioned fertility. I'm assuming that women are, this is more seen in women. Absolutely, so autoimmune diseases in general are more common in women than in men. Um, so we see probably you know, three to one ratio of, of, of women to men. Uh, hypothyroidism also occurs as uh, more often as we age. Um, now the TSH test does increase over age, over time as we age, which may be a normal part of aging, but hypothyroidism, actual high levels that uh, uh, mean hypothyroidism, occur more commonly in older people. Okay, and now, but before we leave, what age should I go to get screened before I have children? When should I do that? What's well, a great question, and we don't have a, firm answer to that. So it depends on who you go to in terms of, of, of groups and guidelines. Uh, some say there's no indication for measuring thyroid unless you have symptoms. Yes. Now I would argue that everybody feels tired in, our day, in this day and age, and so that's a symptom that warrants getting a TSH yeah. blood test. Having said that, some uh, groups uh, recommend uh, at the age of 40 or 50 start doing a TSH every year, or every few years, um, and certainly in women who are looking to conceive, because mm -hmm. we want to identify that before they try to conceive Excellent. and also before they get pregnant, because that baby early on needs mom's thyroid, so we need to make sure she's in good shape there. Absolutely. Well, Dr. Cornier, thank you so much for joining us, and we will put all the information down below if you want to learn more about this, uh, this very important issue. So thank you so Great. much for You're, being with us today. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. Of course. We're back in two minutes.